by uh, google see um, like uh, you you were aware that in those days you know we have a front end software where you will have menus and inside the menus we have master and then a transaction screen then we have a report screen okay and then uh, like uh, uh, in a single uh, software uh, there would be some hundred interfaces connected uh, to that single software okay and it will it, it will be like a jumbo jet plane if any of one of the component gets failed then uh, 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 developer i mean will fix the issue and uh, some if it is a web application uh, there will be a server downtime okay so uh, those days were gone i mean uh, like uh, nowadays uh, if your server is down for even for 5 second there is a billion uh, uh, losses there okay assume that if uh, twitter has gone uh, uh, out for 5 uh, second the whole world will uh, will get so stuck so to 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 depend the like uh, the, the this the legacy old legacy software are coupled to each other even one if one uh, component a gets failed it will affect the other component b which is working fine so to eliminate uh, these types of issues okay uh, google has come out with a concept called micro services okay wherein whatever the functionalities okay i will uh, explode into uh, small small services like uh, all the, if i am having some 10 or 20 functionalities all the 20 functionalities uh, will be exploded into 20 services okay like a service a service b service c service d and uh, this each services i will deploy as a single uh, single piece software okay so that the service a is not dependent on a service b and service b is not dependent on service c this means they are loosely coupled each other okay and uh, even the uh, the functioning speed also is very fast okay and uh, uh, so that even if a service b is getting failed there is no uh, threat to the service a service a will keep on working even if you have any change change activity in a particular service you can pinpoint uh, that particular service so so this way of, way of working is called as micro services so nowadays uh, the, uh people are, i mean more all, all the, the old legacy softwares they are uh, getting converted into microservices okay so i mean uh, assume that i mean i have developed the uh, microservices now i want to deploy in, uh, in a field okay so uh, those things uh, there are various tools are there like uh, kubernetes kubernetes is one of the field where you can deploy your uh, microservice application apart from that uh, we have uh, fargate cluster okay like uh, ecs elastic container service so uh, i mean in the market like uh, there are uh, multiple three to four uh, uh, major software so i mean uh, platforms are there where you can uh, deploy your uh, application functionality in the form of a container okay so uh, like uh, i mean uh, by doing so okay like uh, you can uh, uh, bring that software to live in, in any given point of time i mean uh, now let us see uh what is kubernetes okay one second so uh, like uh, in the old ways you uh, now i am sharing on screenshot you can see like a traditional uh, deployment you will have a hardware operating system and application then the, then the fashion has changed where we started using vmware okay like uh, like uh, if you are working for a client the original server server will be in the client position okay whereas uh, you will be uh, create a copy of uh, the original uh, desktop and uh, they will create a vmware connectivity and uh, from the uh, from india you will be accessing okay so again uh, this is also uh, like, like in last class uh, we discussed that uh, the, there are more memory wastage wastages everything i mean even the application is very slow so now next generation we started rolling out uh, everything in the container container format okay so in the container format uh, we no need a separate uh, hypervisor everything we need only just the underlying hardware operating system so uh, upon the operating system uh, you can uh, create an image uh, that uh, as i told you as as i told you like uh, if you want to create a infrastructure first you have to write a docker file okay so uh, based upon the docker file uh, you can create a image and you can push that image uh, to the uh, docker hub registry and uh, wherever uh, you like uh, wherever you want like it, it it could be in development or it could be in uh, uh, uat okay in production you can pull that image and you can roll out the container 
okay so like that was that is a normal like uh, by, by your container will be running and uh, your uh, content from container you can derive your endpoint url and uh, you can access uh, the application running inside the container from outside anywhere in the world so like uh, slightly tuning uh, in the kubernetes instead of container container will be running inside the pod okay like uh, the pod is again it is it is like a container uh, where inside the pod we will be running two or three more containers so that, that is i mean uh, the, 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 that is the uh, i mean uh, the the architecture of kubernetes okay uh, like uh, uh, i mean but uh, getting knowledge in kubernetes it is not in uh, that much uh, easy it is uh, you, have, you have to write like last you i mean in docker file uh, you used to write uh, docker images in the same way for kubernetes to roll out a kubernetes application you have to uh, 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 write the coding in in yaml okay uh, but before uh, moving into the programming code let, let's find out the, uh, what are the benefits so like uh, using kubernetes you can uh, automatically load balancing i mean uh, the load balancing concept is coming coming with the kubernetes itself whereas uh, in a normal application if you are uh, rolling out okay in like aws you have to create the load balancer and then attach the load balancer uh, uh, to the that application whereas in kubernetes uh, load balancing comes with the uh, kubernetes itself and then orchestration I mean, if you have some hundred containers, okay. For example, my application, I'm having my application, and uh, I'm having hundred uh, interfaces can connected to me. What I can do, uh, like uh, I can create the uh, uh, n number of containers based upon the number of interfaces attached uh, to uh, to my application. And Kubernetes can uh, able to handle uh, all the container uh, like how how we are orchestra troop, okay, is being handled by the uh, troop uh, supervisor in the same way. Kubernetes engine uh, takes care of uh, all the containers of uh, functionality. Okay. And uh, uh, assume that if your container is get, uh, going to dead state, okay, automatically uh, Kubernetes itself uh, will do the self healing. Like uh, it will keep on watching uh, the health status of the each uh, uh, container and automatically uh, it does the uh, self healing uh, activity. Okay. And then uh, second comes uh, you are a secret and configuration management. For example, if you are having a very sensitive information, okay, again uh, like user ID, password, all those things uh, you can uh, encrypt. Uh, there are objects available. We will uh, in later class we will uh, uh, see on what are the various objects. So using that object uh, you can uh, encapsulate uh, your uh, sensitive informations. Okay, so uh, like uh, as I told the like uh, 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 like i mean uh, importance of i mean what the, what are the advantages if you roll out your application in the container format i have listed the benefits like uh, provisioning and deployment is very easily and if you want to scale up or scale down based upon the, uh, the net, uh, if there is more end users okay automatically like uh, uh, in uh, legacy model okay i mean uh, during you i mean uh, you, you you would have done the, the performance testing okay if uh, you are calculated for 100 users like at a time if 100 users are, uh, are trying to access your uh, software what what will be the health of the software okay i mean uh, like uh, if the uh, number goes beyond the 100 then definitely uh, uh, there will be a server issue whereas uh, in uh, kubernetes if you deploy your application in the kubernetes okay n i mean even if it is a thousand uh, uh, users are trying to access automatically the uh, n number of uh, containers will be uh, scale up uh, okay automatically so that is the beauty of the uh, uh, kubernetes okay and also my load balance load balancing and then uh, even the uh, in kubernetes itself uh, having the one tool uh, where uh, using the tool uh, we can monitor the health status of each container if the container goes down automatically the uh, the container will come to life the alternative Container. So these are the some of the benefits. Like uh, I mean, the same way. Like I mean, as we use the Ansible concept. I mean, what is the Ansible concept? I mean, there will be a master and uh, there will be a worker nodes. Okay, your actual uh, application will be installed in the worker nodes, whereas the master will be uh, controlling all the functionality of the worker nodes. In the same way, Kubernetes. I mean, for Kubernetes also, we are having some of the objects 
running in the master machine and some of the objects running in the worker node okay uh, like uh, uh, same way i mean uh, like um, uh, in the master slave concept uh, there will be an agent that will be running in the worker node so agent will take care take take care of controlling the worker node by having a communication link with the engine that is running in the master same concept applicable for kubernetes okay like uh, there will be a kubernetes master uh, where uh, we have uh, some of the apis okay and uh, all the worker nodes is connected to the uh, kubernetes master that is the picture uh, depicted here okay uh, like uh, once again let me show the kubernetes okay this is the kubernetes architecture uh, like as I told you in the master, I mean, say in Kubernetes, there are more than 60 objects are there. Okay. For every activity, you have to use the concerned object and uh, you have the concerned activity has to be carried out. Okay. I mean, uh, it is the play. I mean, Kubernetes means it is a play of objects. You should know how to write a coding in YAML and then how to use those objects in the YAML. I mean, in the YAML script. Uh, like uh, as I told you, uh, in the worker node, okay, there will be two two uh, objects running, kubelet and kubeproxy, proxy. and then uh, in the uh, Kubernetes engine that is work, working in the, that is running in the master, we have a, a few of the objects called uh, controller, scheduler, kube API server, and the etcd. etcd is the uh, database, like uh, it is the database in uh, JSON format. Uh, whatever the uh, the communication that, been, that the proceedings that is happening uh, between the master and the worker node it is being uh, captured in the uh, etcd okay like as i told you kubelet uh, kubelet is the agent that is running in the uh, worker node so kubelet takes care of uh, all the uh, communication that that is uh, uh, it is like a middleman that is uh, taking uh, that is acting as an agent between the master and the child okay and q uh, proxy see q proxy uh, it takes care of like as i told you uh, like there will be 50 pods running in the worker node and uh, inside the pod there will be multiple containers okay so uh, like uh, in between two pods and in between uh, two containers there should be networking okay so that uh, networking part is taken care of by a q proxy okay and then uh, uh, api server like uh, api server server is the heart of the kubernetes engine so uh, it is the control it is like a how i can say like it is like a transformer okay whatever the uh, the kubelet uh, that uh, uh, the request that is sent by kubelet uh, it is a kube api server that is that is getting processed okay so before uh, and uh, and it stores all the information in the etcd and uh, let's see the i mean the the objects like uh, we have api server etcd scheduler controller kubelet service kube proxy and container uh, uh, container runtime container runtime is something but uh, it is the uh, container container object uh, as, as i told you api server it is the front end for uh, kubernetes okay uh, it uh, like uh, i mean uh, it is the heart of the uh, cluster it takes care of uh, entire activity. I mean, uh, uh, entire activity that is happening in the uh, master machine as well as in the uh, worker node. Okay. Like, uh, uh, and then ETCD. ETCD is the uh, database where all the proceedings uh, that is happening inside the Kubernetes cluster, it is being stored in the ETCD. Even uh, uh, like uh, if, if any request is sent by the kubelet, uh, the okay. First, uh, uh, I mean, uh, API server, it will first refer the ETCD, okay? And then, I mean, after uh, uh, taking the information from ETCD, then only, uh, like, uh, uh, it will process the request sent by the kubelet, uh, uh, okay? So, ETCD is very, very important. This ETCD, you can keep uh, in, inside the cluster also, and you can keep outside the cluster also. Uh, and then, I mean, uh, uh, like, accordingly, you have to write your YAML coding. Okay, so ETCD is very, very important. If you assume that if ETCD is corrupted, then the whole cluster comes to a standstill. But still, like without, we can replace that the particular ETCD with the alternative. Okay, and then comes a scheduler. 
see uh, scheduler uh, like uh, like uh, i mean uh, it is responsible for assigning the task okay as i told you like uh, whenever uh, uh, a container or uh, gets corrupted okay so uh, like uh, if uh, two container is going to the dead state uh, to automatically uh, kubernetes scale ups the uh, another uh, two container okay and it is the scheduler uh, no uh, it uh, it assigns the uh, it looks for a newly created container and, uh, and it is uh, i mean uh, uh, like for example if if i am running in five machines okay so in in which machine that container has to work uh, has to run that decision is taken by the scheduler and then we have controller okay controller again they are responsible for noticing and responding uh, when nodes containers or uh, endpoints goes down the controller makes a decision to bring up a new container in such cases so i mean uh, you have i mean uh, first of all uh, if you creating a cluster so definitely these objects uh, will get created automatically okay and then comes uh, like uh, now as i told you uh, like uh, in normal contain in, in normal uh, 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 container we will create a container and inside the container we will deploy the application whereas in kubernetes we have to create a after creating cluster we have to create a pod okay and uh, inside the pod only we need to run the container that is the difference uh, uh, like uh, inside the pod we can run one container or multiple container based upon the uh, i mean uh, our requirement but uh, it is advisable to uh, run to uh, to see that only one container should run in a single uh, single pod okay so like uh, as i told you that uh, pod is a single instance of an application and uh, like it is the smallest object created by the kubernetes uh, to float the container uh, inside the uh, uh, pod okay uh, if your pod is uh, like i mean uh, if your pod is getting corrupted then whatever the container uh, running inside the pod it will also get corrupted so th that's why it's very very uh, uh, like uh, uh, I mean, you should take care careful while deploying the application in Kubernetes. Okay, so that the pod should get created and uh, the whatever the container uh, that you have designated to run inside the pod, it should get created without any issues. Assume that uh, while deploying in uh, your application, the cluster, even if a single error comes, you I mean, you don't proceed, you just uh, stop. Okay, and just uh, analyze and uh, fix the issue, then you proceed. Otherwise, uh, what it will do, like a uh, uh, if you are something uh, some somehow managed to uh, handle the situation what happened uh, after i mean the application will get deployed everything will be correct but after some half an hour to half an hour or uh, one hour uh, automatically uh, i mean a particular container will go to the dead state or a pod will go to the dead state so once if it goes to the dead state it will be difficult to identify where is the issue so that is why i'm it's very, very important that uh, while creating a kubernetes cluster there should not be any error at the same same way while you are deploying the application uh, you, there should not be uh, any error okay so like uh, okay uh, now uh, now i want to create a cluster how can i create the cluster okay see there there, there are various uh, methods are there okay for example i am a software developer i want to create the cluster and see and i have to carry out my uh, development so for that you can use uh, minikube so minikube is a tool where you can create a mini cluster and see that uh, two or three um, uh, worker node worker node is nothing but a slave machine is connected to this uh, master machine okay so uh, generally for development purpose everyone use minikube so apart from minikube also we we can also use a cube cube adm cluster okay uh, but uh, nowadays the kubedm i mean uh, before the two or three years the kubedm cluster we were uh, it is a free source where you can create the cluster and you can run some minimal uh, minimal uh, uh, applications but uh, nowadays uh, the kubedm cluster uh, uh, i think uh, uh, since it is a uh, free, free source okay uh, i mean uh, uh, the, the people who are updating the free source i think they are not following the uh, the correct uh, procedure yesterday i tried to create a kubedm cluster it was not working uh, in in one of the xml file it was throwing error okay so now uh, like kubedm uh, cluster is also a, it has become the uh, uh, old method now uh, we can you, if you want to create a cluster i mean there is a separate services available in aws itself e, eks elastic container service 
uh, sorry elastic kubernetes service okay like uh, i will show you the how to create the uh, eks eks service in uh, aws okay like uh, as i told you once again i'm just uh, logging inside the I'm just logging inside the like you have to once if you get in inside the uh, AWS you have to type EKS. Okay, so Elastic Kubernetes Service. There you have to like uh, there you have to uh, log in. See like uh, as I told you, if you want to create a cluster in Kubernetes, it's very very hectic. Okay, first of all you have to create a EC2 instance. You have to keep that as master, and then number of uh, worker node. Each EC2 instance uh, you have to designate as the uh, number of uh, worker nodes. Then you have to connect uh, master with the client uh, using SSH. I think as last time I have I have shown you for for Ansible. Okay, you have to uh, do the SSH SSH connectivity. Okay, then you have to write some some uh, some uh, four to five commands are there. Okay, so and then you have in the master. So once if that uh, runs successfully it will uh, give you a final command so that final command you have to run in uh, worker node but uh, no currently the the whole setup is not working okay so it is better to use the uh, kubernetes uh, in uh, aws okay wherein i yesterday have created one uh, this thing uh, cl uh, cluster or otherwise i, I will show you uh, the uh, how to create a cluster you can go to add create cluster okay you have to give the cluster name Kubernetes version latest is 1.21. You can uh, uh, select uh, whatever version and then you have to create the role. Okay. So once if you create the role and, and create next. Okay. Uh, like uh, uh, it will ask for a VPC. As you told you, I mean, I, I, as I told you, like uh, VPC, uh, like uh, Kubernetes, it, it is having uh, its own uh, networking okay like uh, well, generally vpc if you if you take vpc and container the networking used is overlay net network okay uh, but uh, here in this case kubernetes it is having uh, its own uh, uh, networking like uh, cl cluster ip uh, then uh, uh, node port and uh, load balancer this three type of networking that we are using in uh, eks okay so like uh, uh, since we are using a case it's very easy okay you have to uh, click you have to select that's all or uh, if you once if you created a vpc if you uh, click here automatically the vpc will get selected and you have to uh, select the subnet okay and then uh, uh, after filling all these things you have to uh, uh, i mean uh, just click uh, next 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 and then uh, once if it's work if you click uh, create automatically the then a cluster will, will, will get created automatically. So that is what uh, I'm showing you. Okay. So yesterday I have created one cluster. So now I have created a cluster. Okay. So now, now I want to interact with uh, that. How I can interact for that. Uh, you have to uh, go to the putty. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I have uh, given you that uh, some of the softwares you have to install. Uh, you, you can see in the chat window. Okay. You have to install uh, uh, AWS CLI, kubectl, and then uh, AWS IAM authenticator. So as I told you, like uh, uh, I mean, uh, to learn the Kubernetes in within 30 minutes, it, it is not an uh, easy task. Okay, you have to at least uh, do, do, it takes uh, 10 to 15 days to learn the Kubernetes. But I am telling you at least a brief point. Okay, so to interact with the AWS cluster, you need uh, these three uh, softwares: AWS CLI, kubectl, and uh, AWS IAM authenticator. Everything is open source. You can. Uh, 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 get it from uh, Google itself. Okay, so now I have installed everything in the putty now using putty I want to see that uh, my cluster is active or not. Okay for that uh, This is the command So if you click that command It will it, it will show you active Okay, the, you can see uh, like uh, my um, um, I'm my cluster name is uh, k8 admin uh you, you can if you, you can come and you can see uh here also see the th this is the uh, cl cluster name okay so after creating cluster uh now i want to uh, create a, a worker node okay so the, 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 the there itself uh, after after creating the cluster go inside the cluster there will be a tab called uh, worker node but uh, here since i have 
getting into the already created cluster it will not come so uh, once if the cluster is created go into the created cluster so there you will find one tab called worker node so there you have to click so there you have to give a number of worker node all the information once if you click uh, automatically uh, the worker node will be get created so in this case uh, here we are having uh, two worker nodes okay so uh, again uh, the, the, there are uh, some uh, uh, commands are there where uh, i mean uh, like uh, to interact with the kubernetes cluster we use the tool called kubectl so uh, using kubectl you can identify uh, uh, you can interact with the uh, cluster as well as the worker node okay so i mean uh, there are uh, i have given you some commands okay so those commands uh, you, you can use and i also given you the link so now i will show you some uh, some uh, small project okay so uh, like, uh, this is the overall project uh, the already i have shared you the, this project with you okay uh, there is a file called readme okay uh, you can go open that uh, that this thing uh, readme so in there in, the, in in that uh, i have given you i mean uh, basic i mean if you want to if you manage to uh, install uh, create a cluster and worker node okay i mean you can uh, 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 i mean whatever the files you can uh, copy to the github so from github you can uh, download okay as i told you like uh, prerequisite first you have to install uh, kubectl here in this case minikube uh, uh, minikube is not required uh, you can directly uh, 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 i mean uh, you can proceed with the uh, application deployment okay so as i told you there are various objects are there okay uh, for like a namespace config map secret persistent volume persistent volume claim okay and then a replica set and then a pod deployment uh, see nearly there are 60 objects are there okay i mean uh, you i mean all the 60 objects are not required to float an application like minimal you you need a uh, uh, th th these objects like a namespace okay i mean the watch with the one which i am highlight highlighting the namespace the namespace it is nothing but uh, like uh, it is a um, i mean um, it is a space you, you are creating a space wherein your application will be deployed there okay like how uh, like uh, uh, in, in in database like uh, we will be having uh, 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 the, the the various uh, workspaces same way here also in a container okay you have to create a namespace so, uh, in that namespace only you have to uh, for, i mean it is like you are allocated you are allocating a space where you will deploy your application okay and then uh, second thing a config map so config map, map is nothing but all, uh, all your uh, uh, configuration like you will be having one uh, database and then uh, one uh, web server okay uh, all the uh, all, all the configuration you have to maintain uh, in this file and then a secret secret is nothing but uh, if you have a database uh, you, you can uh, maintain that your user id and password of that uh, database and then for persistent volume okay so uh, for uh, i mean for my application i need 5 gb okay like, like that allocation uh, you can uh, you can uh, make using persistent volume and uh, whatever the pod pod or container uh, running they can uh, claim that uh, they can be able to access that uh, 5gb space that is through persistent volume claim okay and then uh, as i told you a pod to create a pod again you are using uh, the replica set object uh, okay so uh, like these are the these are the very i mean uh, i will show you that uh, coding uh, each one by one okay first is uh, uh, Config map. Uh, once again, names. Like uh, uh, I will show you that uh, everything you need to write in a YAML file only. Uh, like uh, see the like uh, you can see like this is the way you have to start your uh, Kubernetes uh, YAML file API version, and then you have to uh, kind kind is nothing but uh, what is the object type. So here I am using a secret object okay and then some metadata metadata is nothing but uh, you are uh, um, giving some uh, information for the user to understand uh, about uh, that yaml file so here i am using namespace i am using the namespace called dev and uh, uh, keeping that uh, uh, object i mean the name of the yaml file as a db secret okay and the data is nothing but my sql password so this is the encrypted password okay the uh, uh, this is the username and uh, I mean, uh, this is the root pass. I mean, not only you can use, you can keep a, uh, any other uh, information in an encrypted format. Okay. 
like uh, b b b b uh, like uh, in uh, linux we have a tool called uh, bcd uh, bcd okay so using that bcd tool you can encrypt and you can decrypt like uh, automatically when you uh, deploying the uh, application linux itself will uh, the, the engine itself uh, will use that bcd tool and it will uh, encrypt here i mean uh, whatever uh, here you are finding a decrypted password okay so like that uh, uh, like uh, we can see the, the, the this yaml file so this yaml file is nothing but uh, you know again uh, i'm creating a tomcat service i uh, as i told you like in kubernetes uh, every uh, every activity is considered as an, a service okay so well, i have created a tomcat service wherein it will run a tomcat and it will float the tomcat and the application my application is name is login web app so that login web app will be floated inside the tom uh, tomcat tomcat server okay so like this i have given you various uh, uh, yaml file okay so uh, see, now you can see that my sql so uh, the, the, this is nothing but again uh, this is a volume okay as i told you like i'm i'm allocating uh, 2 gb volume 2 gb storage space like uh, this part uh, the first part is uh, like i'm uh, uh, couple, coupling uh, two objects inside in a single yaml file okay so uh, like uh, first this is persistent volume i'm creating the volume for uh, 2 gb to my application and then uh, i can, like a uh, mode also i'm creating read write read write once read write access mode okay and uh, same way like uh, one more object called uh, like uh, to access the allocated uh, persistent volume we are uh, uh, to, uh, to, to access that we have to use a persistent volume claim okay so these are the uh, some of the uh, this is a mini project okay like i have uh, if you are able to create a cluster and uh, you you can deploy i mean, definitely uh, you have to refer the readme dot file where, where I have given a step by step uh, application, I mean, I have a step by step uh, process how to uh, float that application. Okay, and uh, definitely uh, you will be able to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, float that uh, application in the Kubernetes cluster. And apart from that, uh, I have, I mean, once uh, after creating cluster, okay, like uh, after creating cluster, I want to see uh, the running status, okay. So like uh, this is the uh, uh, the command which one I'm uh, I'm uh, highlighting whatever the uh, the pod that is uh, running in the namespace as I told you namespace it is the space where I'm allocating I'm um, the, the space for the pods to run so uh, I'm ke keeping the uh, name of the that namespace as a dev okay so like uh, this is the uh, like uh, if you type uh, like Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes cheat sheet. It is nothing but uh, the what are the commands that uh, that is required for the that is that is available in the Kubernetes to interact with the Kubernetes cluster the, that is called Kubernetes cheat sheet. Okay, so this is the command you will find in you will you will find in the Kubernetes cheat sheet. So like I am trying to find out uh, what are the pods that is running running in my namespace called dev. Okay, so like uh, like if you uh, uh, if you uh, Pass this command. The, the output the, it will show you the output. So currently I'm uh, in my I'm running MySQL pod and then uh, Tomcat uh, replica said two uh, two worker nodes are running. Okay, and then I can uh, as I told you like uh, like each activity in the Kubernetes is a service. Okay, as I told you whenever if you want to uh, uh, float a application definitely you have to create the three services that is three services nothing but three networking services as uh, that is the cluster ip okay and uh, node port and a load balancer so only if you create the load balancer it will uh, give you an uh, uh, endpoint url so using that uh, endpoint url you can fire in the any browser and you can able to see the login page of your application so i mean for that uh, uh, i have given you uh, the, the commands okay uh, like uh, if you uh, whatever the objects uh, that is running in the namespace it will list out first it is listing out pod object and then it will uh, listing out a cluster uh, service okay and then uh, uh, whatever the objects that, that that i have created i can easily find out for example if i want if, if i want to status the, the config map config object that is running on the namespace dev so uh, uh, you can using a kubectl command you can get and then a secret 
okay and then a secret object and then a pv pv is nothing but a persistent volume uh, pvc persistent volume claim okay and then uh, total number of pods uh, that is running in my uh, namespace called dev like that uh, no, and then uh, total services as i told you uh, i mean uh, what are the services networking services so i need a cluster ip and node port okay so here uh, i have not created a load balancer uh, i mean but uh, load, load balancer is, is also required i mean since uh, as i told you like uh, three services are required for creating a network uh, uh, service in the kubernetes cluster that is cluster ip node port and load balancer i mean uh, if it is small application load balancer is not required i mean using that uh, node port uh, itself uh, you can able to identify the uh, url okay uh, so but uh, in normal application uh, you have to create all the three services so uh, load balancer will give the uh, endpoint url and using that endpoint url you can fire in the browser and uh, the login page will be displayed so like uh, as i told you like uh, kubernetes is nothing but it is a uh, uh, services service like all the application you are rolling in the form of services that's called that's why it's called as micro services services a services b services c services d see now uh, there are some advanced concepts of that you can ask like uh, how the services uh, a is communicating with the service b and uh, how you uh, service b is communicating with the service c again uh, there comes a concept called uh, istio mesh okay so again istio mesh is nothing but it is a, temp a framework wherein uh, it uh, like uh, you, uh, there is a configuration file is there okay in that configuration file you have to uh, uh, mention like uh, service a after service a where the control should give i mean the control should go uh, service b and after the service b where the control should go you, you can put a service uh, e so like that uh, there is a uh, configuration file is there wherein uh, source and destination of each services you can mention there okay so again that is to mesh uh, uh, the, we have that uh, in aws itself aws mesh so you can use the aws mesh service and you can establish establish that is to uh, services okay and again uh, you are like docker uh, again is nothing but uh, by, by, as i told you uh, kubernetes cluster pod is running and inside pod container is running and inside the inside container uh, again uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, that the docker image only is running as a container okay so uh, uh, i mean uh, to work with the kubernetes cluster you should have a very good knowledge in uh, writing a docker file and then uh, uh, handling i mean uh, knowledge uh, how to handle the docker commands okay and then uh, come in, comes uh, kubernetes cluster you should know how to create a kubernetes cluster using eks so nowadays uh, everyone is using eks only so uh, and then uh, you should i mean how uh, how to interact with the eks cluster that is running in the aws amazon platform for that uh, putty and uh, putty i mean as i told you like uh, you need uh, aws cli and then uh, kubectl and then iam authenticator but see all these things if you if you want to discuss it will take some uh, four to five days okay like i have given you what is uh, required so once uh, if you create a kubernetes cluster and uh, establish the relationship with the um, uh, worker node you can deploy the application and uh, once it deployed uh, how to check whether your application has been deployed correctly or not uh, i have given you that uh, this readme dot uh, text file so there you can uh, go use use you can use the uh, respective kubectl uh, uh, commands okay and you can uh, by uh, querying the uh, concern object you can able to uh, identify the health of uh, each object okay and again i am telling uh, kubernetes it is not a easy subject it is a tough subject okay like uh, deploying and uh, if uh, assume that if, if some of the services the external vendors uh, tenants they, if they want to access your uh, kubernetes uh, application again um, uh, you have you should have a very good knowledge in istio mesh okay and uh, the, it is not an, uh, so easy that uh, uh, i mean uh, to give a connection to the ex external with an external application you have, i mean uh, you should have a very thorough knowledge okay and even if a um, error occur first of all uh, uh, i mean uh, again uh, whatever the commands that is applicable for docker same command you can use for kubernetes also only thing you have to use kubectl kubectl log iphone f and you have to give the pod name followed by container container id okay uh, very easily you can get inside the container and you can uh, see the i mean uh, logs F first of all if you are uh, if, if your application is not running 
first of all you have to uh, check the logs okay and then you have to uh, pinpoint exactly the exact container so then go inside the exact, exact container you can identify the uh, uh, logs okay like there are uh, certain uh, like problems like the container will be will come to live for five minutes after five minutes it will go to the dead state so again it will uh, come to the live it will go to the dead state so like it, this process will go in an infinite loop this means uh, uh, the, uh, it is well known that uh, some i mean somewhere you have uh, committed uh, error in creating the cluster or uh, you have uh, somewhere you have created uh, committed in uh, deploying uh, in application deployment so uh, like uh, again i'm telling uh, the Kubernetes is very fast, reliable, okay. Automatic uh, uh, scaling, uh, I mean, uh, scaling up and scaling down, it's uh, it's taken care by the Kubernetes engine itself. Nowadays, every uh, organization is rolling out uh, their application in, in Kubernetes uh, uh, platform only. So, uh, like, uh, uh, gone are the days where we uh, used to develop Java application and uh, deploy in a container, okay. So the, those days are have gone. Now the, all the application uh, is being converted into container. You should have a very good knowledge in uh, YAML file. Uh, you have, should have good knowledge in uh, the various objects uh, that is available in the Kubernetes. There are nearly 60 objects out there. Uh, 60 objects has own specific set of activity. So and, and everything uh, you should uh, capture, you should uh, write the YAML coding uh, for the each object. Okay. So like uh, again, uh, this is going to be a very tough. This is not a very easy topic. Like uh, as I say, uh, once if you uh, uh, get to like uh, there are various uh, uh, knowledge is available in YouTube how to create a EKS cluster cluster. So once if you create a cluster and uh, you create a, I mean uh, able to interact the cluster using Putty, I have given one model application. You can copy that uh, application and you can uh, start your. Uh, 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 Kubernetes activity with, with that application. Okay, and uh, and I mean um, every day you are you have I mean you have to uh, uh, keep on working on Kubernetes. Where uh, if you are starting from today, after two months I can say that uh, you can achieve some ten percentage uh, success in uh, learning the Kubernetes. Okay, like uh, b b there are various uh, b even I have also given you this. Uh, uh, bit uh, to, to tutorial pdf you can go through and uh, you can uh, and i also given a small application where you can use and you can develop your uh, kubernetes uh, knowledge okay uh, uh, so uh, i'm just ending my session guys if you have any doubt you can ask hello 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 yeah, if you have any doubt, you can ask. Yeah, see, so, uh, see, in this session, I have given you only the dots. Okay, what is Kubernetes? But actually, this is the. Uh, I mean, the session should be more practical. Okay, uh, I, mean, I mean, in one class, it is very difficult to gain the Kubernetes knowledge. It will take at least uh, seven to eight class to understand what is Kubernetes. But I, I have given you the, all the points. So, uh, so uh, you you can uh, hear the recordings after uh, whenever you are you are free, and you can uh, start your Kubernetes journey, keeping uh, my video as a starting point. Okay. Uh, yes, Praveen. Yeah, Praveen, you are asking yeah, some yeah, doubts. Yeah, yeah, there is some audio set my end. So, like uh, your mentioned, you know, like uh, you know, nowadays we are uh, morally uh, giving preference to Kubernetes. So, yes. uh, like, uh, what is the difference between the Kubernetes as well as you know the uh, previously, we are using the EC2 instances, you know, for AWS services. So, like, why do we prefer, you know, Kubernetes in place yeah, of the, uh, Yeah, yeah. See, previously, previously, like, uh, assume that uh, I want to deploy my application. What you will do? You, you will first create an EC2 application, okay? Yeah. And then easy, and then uh, uh, you you have to install whatever the software that is required for your software to run, okay? And uh, okay. third thing, uh, you will be uh, deploying your software. Correct. So now you have to, you, you are paying mm -hmm. for the EC2 instance. EC2 instance, EC2 instance is, it will be running all the 24 hours. So you have, you, you, you have to pay for, for that one. Okay. And then uh, every individual software you have to bring, you have to install. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then third thing, assume that your software is running. Okay, fine. I mean, you would have, uh, you, I mean, you, you might be having an estimation that uh, at a time, 10 users can, can uh, access my application. Assume that if at a time, uh, 1000 users come. What will happen? You are a Tomcat server. 
it will, it go, will to go, go to the dead state yeah. it will go to the dead state so again uh, it is a costing i have to work i mean i have to pay for the ec2 instance and then uh, whatever the software uh, so, i mean the, the, the how much memory space it is consuming the, um, uh, that is a uh, services that is running inside the ec2 instance you have to pay whereas i mean uh, those are all very cumbersome tasks okay you have to bring your uh, required software uh, you have to install manually so all this thing been harvested by the kubernetes so kubernetes eks is a service okay uh, where wherein you no need to create a ec2 instance you no to you no need to create a cluster okay and uh, i mean assume that if if i am uh, if i am making my cluster to run for 5 hours you have to pay only for that 5 hours alone okay i mean okay. Uh, pay pay as you when that is the concept of the kubernetes and second thing uh, so th that one is there and second thing like uh, uh, assume that uh, in old legacy I, I will tell only 10 users can access my software at a time uh, if, uh, if if the population grows to 1000 my pop, my application will, will go dead state whereas in kubernetes if you deploy application in kubernetes okay i mean even if it is even if it is uh, have a 1000 5000 automatically that much container will be created automatically and uh, okay. automatic automatic scaling up uh, will done and uh, uh, thousand users can uh, use okay assume that uh, okay thousand users are gone now suddenly the population has been reduced to five so automatically what it will do like kubernetes uh, it will kill all the thousand and it will see that uh, uh, only five containers are running in the cluster so automatic scaling up and scaling down is being taken care of by the engine itself. Uh, uh, I mean, no need to take care of that headache. So that is the beauty of uh, the Kubernetes. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, like, yeah. yeah I, I, sorry for interrupting. So as you mentioned, you know, like, uh, you know, it creates uh, the new instances as and when you know the requirement is up. So can we uh, modify? I mean, I mean so the configuration changes. I mean. It automatically takes all those configuration, which is whatever is configured on the first end. Yeah, yeah. For that, for that, uh, I mean, uh, you have to write in the. As I told you, like in YAML coding, there are objects are there. There you have to mention like a minimum instance is five, maximum instance is thousand. Okay. okay. So like uh, it balances between uh, it, it, when the population is very less, it will see that uh, less than there will be a minimum five instance, five, seven, ten, twelve. But uh, when the population is more. And the population size is less than i mean uh, till uh, I mean, the population size grows up to thousand so automatically uh, uh, i mean uh, based upon that uh, yaml configuration uh, it uh, maintains the container population root thousand okay. okay so in uh, i mean you can you can do coding wise also or otherwise uh, you can do the, like uh, through uh, uh, like, like a command line command line also you can pass you can pass the argument so that is the beauty. You can either you can do it in the ML coding directly while deployment. Automatically, it will be noted down in the cube con cube config uh, uh, file. Or otherwise, if you fail to forget that I forgot to give the uh, that minimum maximum uh, uh, configuration, that that you can do it pass it in the command line also. Okay. Okay. So like, uh, is there is there any alternative? I mean, uh, you know, for example. If I have my uh, five instances running, okay, and I want to uh, configure the next five in some other uh, other way, I mean, some uh, configuration changes needs to be done. So in that case, uh, you know, we need to do that from the scripting file or like. Uh, how yeah, yeah. See, that? either you, as I told you, either you can uh, do it in the that. Uh, I mean, if your application, there will be some set of files, correct? So, mm -hmm. uh, so you can changes, you can do changes in that set of file also, or otherwise you can do it in the command line. Automatically, it will update. Obviously, in in full Kubernetes, whatever there is a file called kube config. Okay, okay. so uh, all the entire cluster information and the worker node, container, pod, every information so it will be stored there in single file called kube kube config. Assume that uh, if the information is there in the kube config, uh, I mean uh, the engine will will take care. If there if there is no in I assume that if there is no information in the kube config and you want to add. That thing you can do it through command line argument using kubectl command. Automatically it will uh, get update. I will show you that that, that command. So the one scan. Uh, this is the this is the command. Okay, you can see here no. Like uh, this is the uh, cube config. Yeah. 
so uh, for every cluster cluster there will be a, a parent file the, with qconfig file available so qconfig file is a file where it stores the uh, cluster informations even as yes, uh, like uh, if you are designating uh, minimum five maximum five that's it that information will also be will available here so uh, 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 engine uh, i mean uh, once you deploy all your del deliverables okay i mean all the informations it will be like uh, assure that you have you have uh, like a thousand files you have deployed thousand files so all the information is available in the thousand files it will be collated and it will be written in a as a, as a single uh, stretch in a single file called qconfig so qconfig is the uh, like a heart uh, uh, for the uh, kubernetes engine if your qconfig file gets corrupted then uh, whole cluster comes to a steady state but again uh, there is some process are there where you can uh, do the uh, uh, i mean uh, work around okay Okay, okay, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Have one question, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, as we saw, like on Docker side, so we directly, uh, if you are like assigning any IP, so we are directly uh, used container, okay. But in yeah, Kubernetes, yeah. In Kubernetes, we discussed like we have node and it contains like pod, the pod is like the particular uh, uh, having some containers, right. So uh, in case uh, if for having some multiple containers, so how can manage uh, that is the like assigning IP via proxy or is any other method? So, yeah, yeah. See, I mean, I mean, see, like. Uh... See, using Docker, you are create, creating a container. So every container, it will have its own IP, correct? Uh, yes. Same, see, I mean, uh, it is nothing, I mean, uh, assume that there are 100 containers. So 100 containers, uh, I can uh, assume that uh, some container, it, it's, it's working for the travel travel project. Some container, it is working for the health, health. So what is the using, I mean, meaning of pod? I mean, uh, I can uh, collate the related containers and I can keep it in a single place. So that place is called the pod. Okay. So again, uh, the the container running inside the each pod. Okay, they will be having uh, their own individual uh, IPs. Okay. So I mean, uh, uh, so sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 So just my read, like, uh, for there is nothing uh, for like containers. The only thing is pod. So. No, no. See, pod, pod is a pod is a location where you are storing the related containers in a single place. It is a location. That's all. Uh, Nityanand, just one thing. I mean, yeah. You can stop screen share. Okay. And number two, I have a call right now, so you can go on with uh, the questions and answer them. Sure, and for sure. Others, yes, please fill in the feedback form and notify. We have the common group where you can notify. And do you guys want the recording to be on for the questions or should I put it off? Nithyanan? Uh, no, but let it be known because uh, the, these guys are asking very, uh, very important critical questions. So but let okay. it on until the question is question uh, hour is going. Okay. Okay. No worries. So yes, I would leave the call as I have another call to attend. So you guys can carry on with the question and feedback form is a must. Sure, sure. Okay. So, Thank you, Thank So, you. Praveen, as I told you, there will be a separate IP for pod and there will be separate IPs for the containers that are running inside the pod. Okay. You got my point? So, like pod A, pod B, they will interact with each other. So, far to, to interact with each other, definitely there should be an IP. And again, the container running inside the pod. Uh, if you if three containers are running inside the pod a so again uh, to uh, interaction there should be an ip so each container uh, will have an uh, their own ip okay in the same way assume that uh, the, the, there are containers uh, running inside the pod a and there are containers running inside pod b again uh, these uh, these containers uh, can can interact uh, 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 cross each other what do you mean? I mean that is the pod that container running in pod a can interact with the containers running inside the pod b what be point okay yeah yeah but uh, the, the the thing is uh, you i mean uh, uh, the basic net then uh, you should have very good knowledge on networking like uh, tcp ip 
and then uh, internet protocol uh, and uh, i mean uh, udp okay uh, so uh, i mean uh, the, some uh, like uh, b b ethernet uh, all uh, there should be some basic uh, knowledge uh, internet i mean how the networking is working uh, if there if, if you don't have uh, knowledge in uh, networking knowledge then uh, definitely it will be very very difficult uh, 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 i mean uh, to work in the kubernetes cluster for example assume that uh, there are uh, uh, thousand pods running okay thousand pods thousand applications running and each pod is communicating with each other okay but uh, uh, if any issue uh, i mean issue occurs in the networking area so then again you should have very good knowledge in uh, uh, i mean solving that issue at the same time you uh, see if your container is running if your container goes to the dead state you should not kill that container okay you should do some uh, work around in order to make the container live or at least the whatever the resource that is attached to that container that you should be able to take the backup separately so for those things you should have a very very good knowledge in networking unless until you don't have knowledge in networking it's very very difficult to you know to understand the, uh, the kubernetes concepts so that's why uh, start uh, if you don't have uh, you start reading today and today itself what is cp tcp i mean what is tcp what is http what is https what is udp okay so uh, there are some uh, 10 to 12 uh, uh, protocols are there so all the protocols uh, you should have a very good uh, knowledge so even for nowadays uh, like uh, even that that is streaming no like uh, uh, broadcasting from the uh, tv tv stations uh, to our uh, uh, tv in our home so even that that is also is being done through kubernetes also kubernetes and even that the streaming platform that uh, z uh, sony all that the streaming platforms all uh, everything is running in kubernetes platform only okay so for, for that uh, you have to have a very good knowledge in udp user datagram protocol the, uh, and then a tcp transfer uh, transmission control protocol internet protocol so uh, what is the uh, uh, default port uh, that is uh, required for each each protocol how the uh, protocol is running how each protocol is communicating to each other so like, again uh, uh, you should have a very good uh, strong knowledge in uh, networking and a strong knowledge in yaml coding and then a strong uh, more or a strong knowledge in uh, kubernetes objects and also you should know very theoretically how the uh, uh, cluster is nothing but it is a composite of master plus a child nodes so how the interactions are um, uh, happening between the master and the child okay and uh, who is responsible for this interaction um, naturally the some of the apis apis running in uh, master and apis running in the uh, 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 worker node i mean how the information flow is uh, going between the master and the worker so if the worker is goes down how the how the this information is passed to the api server i mean api object running in the master so all these things uh, theoretically also we should be very very strong then only you can able to work in uh, kubernetes but uh, once if you uh, uh, happens to make a uh, i mean uh, you are uh, your skill in kubernetes then uh, i mean then i can say that uh, you are the fit for the devops so nowadays uh, devops i mean for the devops application they are mainly using aws or azure and uh, and microservices when it comes to microservices either uh, aks there is azure kubernetes service or uh, uh, amazon uh, kubernetes service e e eks or aks and uh, uh, even for google also we are having uh, google kubernetes service gks but uh, everything the concept is same okay so uh, any other question So friends, do you have any other question? No. Yeah, okay. Uh, then we can, uh, uh, yeah, if, uh, okay, no question, then we can wind up. Thanks, uh, friends, for, for joining this session and giving me an opportunity to, to speak to you on the topic called Kubernetes, okay? So please, uh, again, I'm telling Kubernetes, uh, it is not an easy task. First of all, uh, you should start from the basic. I mean, uh, what is Docker? Uh, how to write a Docker file? and then how to create an image and then how to uh, float uh, container from that image okay 
so once if you get practice this, then only you have to jump jump into the kubernetes then uh, you learn about the how to create a cluster and then how to create a worker node okay and then uh, at the end you can use my that uh, mini application which i told you uh, definitely that mini application once if you assume that uh, you have successfully launched my mini application and uh, you are able to see my web page i mean that login page this means i can say that 60 uh, percent knowledge you have got in uh, uh, kubernetes other 40 percentage so other 40 percentage uh, if you are uh, very i mean if you made your skill in handling istio mesh okay uh then i can say that uh, you are uh, very much i mean 100 percentage uh, skill you have acqu you acquired in kubernetes okay so these are the some of the concepts where you have to be very very thorough okay and uh, but again i'm telling you that uh, if you are finding out an issue in kubernetes application it is very very difficult if it requires seven to eight years uh, troubleshooting i mean the, the person who has got very good experience in troubleshooting that in production activity only he can able to identify otherwise uh, uh, i mean for the beginners it will be i mean you will you will find a way it looks to be a very vague subject okay and uh, it will create an interest also but uh, it is you are up to you that you create interest once you have to venture and find out the solution so once if you become master then uh, i mean uh, uh, in every, I mean, in every company, the the salary for the uh, the person who is having a hands-on experience Kubernetes is very very high, okay. Than the normal uh, that uh, uh, comparing to a programmer who is working in for Node.js or normal programming Java Java-based uh, programmers, okay. So Kubernetes is very very uh, hot topic, and uh, it can it, it will be in the industry for another 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 ten years, okay. So uh, that is the beauty of uh, Kubernetes. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you for joining. I'm dropping down. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Thank you.